Now to that Sports Illustrated investigation focusing on allegations of sexual misconduct and a corrosive culture in the Dallas Mavericks front office. It continues to send shockwaves through the sports world and beyond because this really is a story just not about the Mavs front office, but perhaps about any workplace in the country. And a woman at the center of this story is speaking only to News 8 this morning. She asked that her identity be hidden because she and countless other women still fear retaliation from the organization. As Mark Cuban contends, he was unaware of the scope of the problem, a workplace nightmare. This morning, the former Mavs employee talks about how she dealt with sexually charged conversations initiated often by CEO and President Terdima Ussery. So when he proved his behavior to be a habit, you, you, you told him face to face with no one else in the room that, that it wasn't acceptable? Right. And, and he said? Just, he just, oh, that was generally the attitude. So he wanted you to take it as a joke, it's his sense of humor, it happens to be crass, but he didn't mean anything by it, is that? Right. A fair assessment? Just kind of like get over it. You said you'd worked in, in work environments with men before. And so in that, I'm wondering, are you suggesting that there's a certain level of behavior that is generally acceptable by men in the workplace that might include sexual innuendo? For sure. I think that you have to have a certain thick skin. But this was a whole other level. It was touching. It was... Um, explosive behavior. It was explosive, angry, angry. It was, it was just on a whole other level of almost like psychopaths. And, and you just didn't understand what was happening to you every day. So four seasons with the organization, uh, some people listening to this, even women listening to this will say, I would not put up with that for that long. And so I have to ask you, why did you put up with it for so long if there was no recourse in place for you? I loved the job and it was a dream job, but a nightmare situation. And did you hold out hope that the situation would get better? Every day. And if there was no recourse for you to be heard or for other women in the office to be heard, did you try to ask yourself, how will this ever get better? Exactly. And then finally it was like, I have to leave because this is not safe. When you hear accounts that Mark Cuban had no idea any of this was going on, what would you say to that? I think that's completely false and pathetic. You think it's false and, and pathetic, but do you know it to be false? I think it's false. And because? Because he was so involved with every detail of everything that was going on in that office. And here is Mark Cuban's response. Quote, we won't comment until the completion of the investigation. That's the internal investigation he's, re he's referencing there. I would ask, that you suggest to the interviewee that they reach out to the investigators. It would be great if they would share what is said to them as well as on camera. And I suspect that will probably be the case. And that particular interviewee um, told me that as more women are emboldened to come forward, they perhaps will step at some point out of the shadows and uh, identify themselves. But now they fear not only retaliation, but they don't know how their current employers um, will handle the publicity that may come with uh, their going public. And coming up ahead, we'll talk more about um, this culture, what Mark Cuban knew and when, and, and her interactions with him. Okay, well, coming up,